Edgar Cayce, also known as the Sleeping Prophet, is celebrated as the most documented psychic of the 20th century. Over the course of 40 years, Casey used his alleged gift of mediumship to give psychic readings to thousands of clients, informing them about everything from past lives to medical diagnosis to future prophecies. All of this he did whilst in a state of deep relaxation. It was as such that he claimed to be able to calibrate his mind to the secrets of universal consciousness. He is credited with having successfully predicted both world wars, not only foreseeing their eventuality, but also providing accurate start and end dates. He is also said to have predicted the stock market crash and the Great Depression of 1929. During a life reading in 1925, Casey said of a young man, In the present sphere, he will have a great amount of monies to care for. In the adverse forces that will come then in 1929, care should be taken lest this money, without the more discretion and small things, be taken from the entity. In addition to these future prophecies, Casey was also able to reveal long forgotten information about the ancient world. Known as retrocognition, he would provide details about archaeological sites, records of lost civilizations, and topographical changes whilst in a trance-like state. Although almost impossible to verify, modern-day research has uncovered evidence to support some of Casey's claims. One example concerns the Nile River. During several readings for different clients, Casey stated that the Nile had changed its course across the ages and had once emptied into the Atlantic Ocean. The Nile entered into the Atlantic Ocean. What is now the Sahara was an inhabited land and very fertile. In those periods when the first change had come in the position of the land, when the Nile emptied into what is now the Atlantic Ocean on the Congo end of the country, what is now as the Sahara was a fertile land. Decades after Casey's death in August 1986, an article published in the academic journal Science reported that shuttle imaging radar had discovered previously unknown river valleys beneath the driest part of the Sahara. Satellite imaging and on-site archaeological investigations revealed the possibility of a river of Amazonian proportions traversing the African continent across the path of today's Nile before emptying into, just as Casey stated, the Atlantic Ocean. Similar was Casey's claim that sunken portions of the legendary continent of Atlantis would be discovered under the slime of ages of seawater near what is known as Bimini off the coast of Florida. In 1968, some 23 years after his death, an extensive underwater stone pavement was discovered near North Bimini Island. Since this time, many have linked what is now known as the Bimini Road to the lost civilization of Atlantis. Only time will tell if Edgar Cayce truly had the ability to reveal the secrets of these ancient civilizations. In regards to the future of humanity, Cayce prophesied the great impact which China would have on the world stage. On one occasion, he informed a group of people that China would one day be the cradle of Christianity as applied in the lives of men. He also emphasized the leading role of Russia, stating that through this country comes the hope of the world, not in respect to what is sometimes termed communism or Bolshevism, no, but freedom, freedom, that each man will live for his fellow man. The principle has been born there, it will take years for it to be crystallized, yet out of Russia comes again the hope of the world. Mikhail de Nostradam, widely known as Nostradamus, is believed to have correctly predicted world-changing events for centuries. In modern times, he is credited with having foreseen the rise of Adolf Hitler, the death of Benito Mussolini, and the assassination of John F. Kennedy as well as the 11th of September attacks on the Twin Towers. 
many believe that this seer had a sharper eye for the present day than any of us living through it. Yet, Nostradamus was born in 16th century France, over half a millennium away from our own times. It was in the mid-1500s that Nostradamus published his predictions. Fearful of prosecution by the church, he wrote his prophecies in undated, cryptic four-line poetic verses. Les prophecies, as they were titled in French, were divided into ten volumes, each referred to as a century, for the way in which they each contained 100 prophetic verses. Due to their enigmatic nature, interpreting these prophecies is no straightforward task. It is because of this that most academic sources dismiss Notre Dame's quatrains, stating that the associations to world events are largely the result of misinterpretations or even mistranslations. However, the eerie and sometimes detailed perspective which the prophecies seemingly offer make them hard to ignore. Some claim that Nostradamus even prophesied the presidency of Donald Trump. The great, shameless, audacious baller, he will be elected governor of the army. The boldness of his contention, the bridge broken, the city faint from fear. As President of the United States of America, Donald Trump will also take on the role of Commander-in-Chief, which may explain the allusion to the Governor of the Army in this verse. The false message about the rigged election, to run through the city stopping the broken pact, voices bought, chapel stained with blood, the empire contracted to another one. In this quatrain, Nostradamus foretold that speculation of election fraud would sway voters. His references to a chapel stained with blood and the empire contracted to another one could refer to events yet to reveal themselves, possibly religious persecution and the US's future relations with another empire, most likely Russia. As for other future events, Nostradamus has much to say. In one of his last quatrains, Notre Dame predicts that, after centuries of rule, the British monarchy will come to an end. The young man born to rule Britain, though commended by his dying father, once the father is dead, London will cavil and the kingdom will be taken back from his son. Many have stated that Nostradamus predicted darker events to come, including ecological disasters, a global epidemic, and impending war. With the plague over, the earth shrinks. Peace will reign for a good while. People will travel through the sky like birds and by sea and wave, before war once again is called for. Ray Kurzweil is an author, inventor, and scientist renowned for his genius. He is also a futurist, which makes him a modern breed of seer, a person who dedicates themselves to the academic study of the future in order to make predictions about it. Unlike traditionally regarded visionaries such as Nostradamus, futurists like Ray Kurzweil work within the parameters of accepted science by basing their predictions on the projectionary potential of current trends. It is Kurzweil's scientific background which makes his work intriguing. Amongst his many accomplishments, he has published several best-selling books, including The Age of Spiritual Machines. Written in the late 1990s, Kurzweil provided extremely detailed insights into the future course of humanity with specific regard to technology. Many of these predictions have turned out to be astonishingly accurate. In a chapter dedicated to the year 2009, Kurzweil explained how desktop computers would be sidelined in favour of the increasingly lighter and thinner portable computer. He specified that some of these computers would be embedded in clothing and jewellery, such as wristwatches. From the 1990s, he was also able to envisage the rise of electronic books, describing machines capable of replicating paper in their high quality resolution. Computer displays have all the display qualities of paper high resolution, 
high contrast, large viewing angle, and no flicker. Books, magazines, and newspapers are now routinely read on displays that are the size of, well, small books. In regards to warfare, Kurzweil wrote that by 2009, war would be dominated by unmanned, intelligent airborne devices. The United States of America would continue to fulfill the role of the world's dominant military power. He also stated that one of the greatest military issues of the early 21st century would be threats posed by terrorist groups. Considering the accuracy of these past predictions, Kurzweil's forecasts for the future are startling. By the year 2029, Kurzweil predicts that there will be almost no human employment in production, agriculture, and transportation. This would lead to a widening gap between societal groups, as machines increasingly replace the human workforce in low-skilled manual labor employment. In the year 1990, he also outlined the future danger of new technologies being heavily regulated and used to create an era of efficient and effective totalitarian control. Personal privacy, he predicted, would become an increasingly pertinent political issue as governments seek to control access and information. Baba Vanga was a blind Bulgarian mystic born in 1911, who many believed to be more accurate in her prophecies than Nostradamus. During her lifetime, Vanga repeatedly attributed her prophetic ability to the mysterious story behind her sight loss. According to her own testimony, when she was 12 years old, a tornado swept her up into the air and threw her onto a nearby field. After a long search, she was found, frightened and unable to open her eyes due to the sand and dust which covered them. Despite having an operation, the injuries which she sustained were never fully healed, causing her to gradually lose her sight. It was after this that she claimed to have developed a paranormal ability. Many people, including the Bulgarian Tsar Boris III, would visit Baba Vanga from all across the world seeking her advice and foresight. Baba Vanga never published her prophecies, so much of what we know comes from the conversations which she had with those who visited her. One of her most notable predictions came in 1989, when she stated, Horror, horror! The American brethren will fall after being attacked by the steel birds. The wolves will be howling in a bush, and innocent blood will be gushing. Many have associated this prophecy with the fall of the Twin Towers in 2001. She is also credited with having successfully predicted the breakup of Czechoslovakia, the death of Stalin, and the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. During an interview in 1994, Baba Vanga revealed her methods of divination. She spoke of visions of the dead and their ability to inform her of future events. Sometimes, she would hear only voices. The voice comes from a distant place, as if on the radio. Sometimes it sounds clear, sometimes not. As for the future, before her death in 1996, Vanga stated that the African American would be the last acting president of the United States. She is also alleged to have prophesied a great Islamic war which would culminate in the near destruction of the European continent. Its countries would be almost empty, and nothing more than wastelands devoid of any form of life would remain. Mitar Tarabic was an illiterate peasant from the small Serbian village of Kremna. Before his death in 1899, he acquired a local reputation for his apparent ability to see the future. The local Orthodox priest at the time decided to write down his predictions for posterity. These passages are now referred to as the Prophecies of Kremna. Unlike many acclaimed seers, Tarabic's prophecies contained a surprising amount of detail, including specific names, places, and dates. In one of his predictions, he is recorded as having said, 
after the assassinations of the king and queen, the Karadjordjevic will come to power. Then we will again start a war with the Turks, four Christian states will attack Turkey, and our border will be on the River Lim. Then we shall finally conquer and avenge Kosovo. From 1903 to 1912, Tarabik's prophecy played out perfectly. The Serbian king and queen were killed by their own guards and replaced by the Karadjordjevic dynasty. Shortly afterwards, the First Balkan War broke out, which saw four Christian nations fight against the Ottoman Empire. The result was a successful expansion of Serbia to the River Lim. During this conversation with the local priest, Tarabik offered startling insight into another future war. Soon after this war, another war will start. The big war, in which a lot of blood will be spilled. If that blood were a river, a huge stone of 300 kilograms would roll in its current easily. I will tell you one more thing, father. The invading army will come to Kremna exactly on your baptismal day. Stay for three years, and go away on the same day they came, St. Luke's Day. But you will not see the end of the war. In the last year of the world's big carnage, you will die. Both these wars, the one with the Turks and the big one when the whole world will be at war, will take away two of your grandchildren, one before and the other after your death. Once again, Tarabik's words became reality. During World War I, the Serbian army was defeated by the Germans on the 9th of October, making it highly probable that the village of Kremna was occupied a few days later, on St. Luke's Day, the 18th. Serbia was liberated three years later, once again around St. Luke's Day. Tarabik's priest would die in 1918, the final year of World War I, having survived one of his grandchildren who died during the bloodshed. His other grandchild outlived him, but would later die in World War II. Tarabik would go on to reveal many more accurate predictions of the future, making allusions to a Red Tsar upon the Russian throne, who will not wage war until attacked. Stalin only entered World War II after being attacked by Hitler. Tarabik also described the great kingdoms from across the sea who had set free enslaved Europe. In regards to more modern times, he is claimed to have stated that, Men will build a box, and within will be some kind of gadget with images, but they will not be able to communicate with me already dead, even though this image gadget will be as close to this other world as hairs on the human scalp are close to each other. With the help of this image gadget, Man will be able to see everything that is happening all over the world. Although Tarabik died long before the rise of television and computers, he seemed to possess an insight into the technological advancements of a future society. Elaborating on this trend, he described how, the more people will know, the less they will love and care for each other. Hatred will be so great between them that they will care more for their different gadgets than for their relatives. Man will trust his gadget more than his first neighbour. Tarabik's words seem hauntingly accurate. However, at least one author has questioned the authenticity of the prophecies of Kremna, suggesting that Mitar Tarabik is little more than a local legend. Yet, it could be that those who question the reality of Tarabik and his prophecies are simply too afraid to accept a future in which his words come to pass. After all, the notebook of the priest is said to contain a chilling description of yet another world war, and even more devastating consequences. The greatest and the angriest will strike against the mightiest and the most furious. When this horrible war starts, woe to those armies that fly over skies. Better off will be those who fight on ground and water. Then people will run away from cities to the country, and look for the mountains with three crosses, and there, inside, they will be able to breathe and drink water. Those who will escape will save themselves and their families, but not for long, because a great famine will appear. 
There will be plenty of food in towns and villages, but it will be poisoned. Many will eat because of hunger and die immediately. Those who will fast to the end will survive. Only one country at the end of the world, surrounded by great seas as big as our Europe, will live in peace without any troubles. What makes Tarabik's prophecy all the more disturbing is its seeming concurrence with the future predictions of both Nostradamus and Baba Vanga. With the plague over, the earth shrinks, before war, once again, is called for. Europe will be almost empty, and nothing more than wastelands devoid of any form of life. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please show your support for the Paranormal Scholar by liking and sharing this video. 